and welcome to episode 13 of the Crochet Luna Blogcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from the San Diego area in Southern California where we are celebrating Thanksgiving this week. This is a very busy week for us here in the States, but it's filled with getting together with family and good food. Now, for me and my husband, this is going to be a pretty interesting Thanksgiving. We are um, now on a plant-based diet, which means we do not eat animal products or animal or meat or dairy or any of that kind of stuff. So Thanksgiving for us this week is going to be pretty interesting. And I'm looking forward to it, actually. I know that I have briefly talked about it on the blogcast before, but um, my husband and I are um, on a plant-based diet since this past summer, um, mainly for health reasons, and I have seen some good benefits come from that. So I um, told him that we were going to have to prepare lots of dishes to take to my mom's house for this Thanksgiving, which is pretty cool. We're looking forward to it. And it just so happens that here in my little town of Escondido, we have one vegan restaurant that is run by a lovely, lovely lady named Shanti. And um, Shanti also does cooking classes. So we signed up for some of her cooking classes. And let me tell you, we have made some fantastic food. And last Saturday, um, or this past Saturday, she was doing a Thanksgiving um, feast type of a class. So uh, lots of dishes that you can take and make for Thanksgiving dinner that are vegan. But I wasn't able to make the class, but my husband went and he brought me back samples of everything that was made. And let me tell you, it was really, really good. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and we'll see how it goes. I mean, it's really just my husband and I, and actually my mom also, who are um, eating a plant-based diet. Although she was so funny, she says to me, um, oh yeah, I'm getting some really good turkeys this year. I'm getting some, um, you know, antibiotic and organic turkeys. And I said, that's great, mom, but you know, we won't be eating them. And she's like, oh yeah, I know, I know. I just got them for everybody else, so. Um, it's, it's a little bit, it's tough, you know, when you're on a plant-based diet because, um, sometimes people, you know, want to go out of their way to cook for you. And I always say to them, don't, don't worry about it. Well, I usually either bring stuff for us to eat or we eat before we go. So we make it work and it's, it's good. So for all of the, all of those of you celebrating Thanksgiving in the States, happy Thanksgiving. Um, I hope it goes well. I hope you enjoy your family time and, um, let's move on and start the episode. Um, I wanted to give you a quick RA update. I did have a little bit of a flare up last week and I know why I really pushed myself last week to do way too much stuff. And I got very little sleep, which to me, if I'm very much affected by a lack of sleep, my R, my RA tends to flare up with the less sleep I get. And last week was one of those weeks where I just um, was battling the insomnia. I just couldn't sleep and I was doing so many things. And so finally towards the end of the week, my body just gave out. And um, But I'm better now. And so it's all good. And thank you so much to everyone who sent me the lovely messages on Instagram. I read them all. And yes, I'm doing better now. So thanks a lot for all that. The name of this episode is Blessed and Thankful. And it's also subtitled Mandalas for Marinka. Now, many of you probably know who Marinka Slump was. Um, she also went by the nickname Wink. I found uh, out about Marinka through a blogger, Catherine Bracillo. She is actually one of the very first bloggers that I found when I joined um, Instagram. I started crocheting in the fall of 2013 and then I knew nothing about Instagram but I finally posted because I went back to look at the diff my different posts and, and I was documenting different dates for this episode and my first post on Instagram was back in August of 2014 and um, Catherine actually runs the website Crochet Con Concupiscence, 
concupiscence. I actually had to look up the word and the pronunciation because it's got a little tricky. And so I found her website and it just it blew my mind because I had no idea there was a there was any such thing as a crochet community. Um, I had no idea about blogs and and all this all the resources that are available online. I was just finding my way through it. It was my first introduction to um, the crochet community. And if you have not checked out Catherine's blog, I would highly suggest that you do because she is an incredible resource for the crochet community. She, um, it's funny because she used to do these roundups on Sunday where she would pull uh, photos from different IG um, accounts that would, you know, they would use the hashtag, um, hashtag crochet, con crochet concupiscence, concupiscence. Oh my God, you guys, I'm going to have such a hard time with that word, but I'll put the, the, I'll put the hashtag there because you could still send her, you can still tag your work with this hashtag and she sees it. So I remember I would hashtag that my little photos and, um, you know, she was one of the first people that actually, um, I dealt with, uh, on a, um, in the crochet community. She's one of the first people that, you know, liked my post and um, one Sunday post included one of my projects in it and I was blown away. I was, it was such an incredible feeling that to be recognized in that way since I was such a new crocheter. So I remember um, in the summer of 2015 seeing her post about Morinka Slump and Immediately, I, I had to go see uh, her work and read more about her. For those of you who don't know, uh, Maureen Kaslump suffered from depression, and um, she actually committed suicide the summer of 2015 and left a, a huge hole in the crochet community because she was very well-loved. And we actually, it's funny because I... Crocheted my first mandala. I know mandalas are everywhere now. It's not a big deal to find a pattern for a crochet mandala, but really, she's one of the people attributed to bringing mandala to the popularity that that it has now. And so I remember looking at these mandalas and thinking they were so beautiful. And so Catherine read. And if you look at my show notes for this episode, they're very extensive. And I wanted to give you guys as much information as possible in case you wanted to go see um, the original post, um, the links to Wink's blog, the links to her Ravelry um, patterns. I wanted to give you lots of information about um, the project that Catherine launched. So Catherine, in order to honor Wink's memory, launched a project called Hashtag Mandalas for Marinka, where she asked uh, crocheters to send her mandalas. And for over a year and a half, well, it was over a year period that she would post the mandalas that were sent to her on her blog. It's pretty incredible. I mean, it, it was hundreds of people um contributing to this project so the way it worked it was in her mind the end product would was going to be an art show and a book um documenting the project so fast forward to now two years in the making um i attended the art show presentation in long beach this past saturday and i picked up um, the book that she self-published for the project. And so I remember, and I remember seeing everyone's post and I would go periodically and I would check to see, um, you know, all the different mandalas because you were encouraged to send her a note if you wanted to, or, you know, there were several that were sent anonymously, but it was, it was a big deal. I felt compelled to participate in the project. I felt 
I wanted to contribute to the project. It was it was an incredible project that she put together. And so I crocheted my first mandala based on Wink's um, standard 12 round mandala. You can actually see samples of them behind me. This is a, that's a 12 round mandala right there. And also the two above there, that one and that one, that one right there, those are samples of her standard 12 round mandala pattern that I, and since that first mandala that I crocheted and I sent to Catherine, I have crocheted many, many mandalas and I have gifted many mandalas because they make great gifts and I think that people um, can use them for so many things. You know, you can lay them down as little, you know, placemats or you can hang them up as wall art. So that's a very versatile, but for me, um, I always gravitate to crocheting a mandala when I just need to chill out, when I just need a, a project that's repetitive and soothing. And so I prefer the 12 round mandala, which doesn't have a lot of um, intricate stitching going on, although you can find some incredible ones. Um, the one that comes to mind is um, a cow that was done called Sophie's Universe. If you guys have seen um, any work on that, based on that um, project, that Sophie's Universe, it's a pretty extensive, incredible project. But getting getting back to to the work that Catherine has done, I um, saw the post that she was going to be in Long Beach, and I told my husband, I said, I'm, I have to go to this. I have to go. I want to meet Catherine, you know, I've had, you know, casual dealings with her online and I, a huge fan of her blog, huge fan of her Instagram account. And so I said, I, I have to go meet her. So off I went on Saturday, last Saturday. And it was funny because, so I'm in Escondido and Long Beach is about, it's a couple hours, maybe two and a half hours away from where I live, but I had to swing by and drop my kids off at my parents' house and then go to Long Beach. So I am literally like pulling into my parents' place going, okay, here are the kids, love you, bye-bye. And I headed out. And it still took me, because I hit LA traffic. Well, I hit traffic everywhere. It still took me like over two hours to get to Long Beach because of the traffic. And yet, and still took me another like 30 minutes to find parking because this, the the gallery where it was at had just street parking. And if you guys know LA Park, well, if you guys know any major city parking situation, you know it can be tough. But so I made it in and I was welcomed right away by, uh, I believe it was Liz. Liz it, there's two ladies that actually helped bring the project to the Long Beach um, Gallery. Liz and Elisa from Threadwinners. And what they do is they're a, a team of crocheters that actually do crochet um, yarn bombing and other fiber um, installations around Southern California. So they were the first people I met and they were very welcoming. And then they introduced me to Catherine and it was such a joy to, to meet her. She's such a nice, genuinely just wonderful person to to have met and it was a very intimate space which um I loved I and as you walk in the mandalas were everywhere and I know I, I had an idea from the minute I walked in that that I wasn't expecting to see my mandala because like I said so many were sent in and just seeing the space I thought there's just no way you get you have all of them here I mean they had a fair uh, number of them and I will I will insert some pictures so that you can see I apologize for the quality of the photos because I took them at night with my phone but I will link um, I will put links to the Instagram accounts for thread winners and the studio the gallery itself which is Grab Back Studios in Long Beach, so that you can see better quality pictures. But I was looking around, looking around, and they said, you know, I we were talking. I was talking to some of the people there, and you know, made mention that I had contributed a mandala, and they said, 
oh, well, look around and see if you can find yours. And sure enough, right away, I found my little mandala, the first mandala I ever crocheted was there. And I, it was just joy is the only word I can tell you. I, I felt joy and I felt very connected to um, so many crafters that contributed to the project. And so I, you know, I talked a little bit with Catherine and, and she made a point to introduce me to every single person there. And she introduced me to her mother and to her brother and to her sister. And I mean, every person that was there, I, I met. And that is the beauty of a small gallery. I, I love the whole atmosphere of it. There was also a, um, a dance performance that was done that was very emotional and um, we talked <clears throat> we talked about some of the things that the performance the emotions that it evoked so all in all it was it was an incredible night it was an incredible and you know I I've, I've had gallery I've been part of shows you know with art with paintings and things like that but I've never been part of a collaboration of that size. I, I've i never been part of collaborating with makers at that level. And I can, I just felt so connected. And I looked, I looked at every single mandala and I looked at every, you know, incarnation of Wink's pattern that you could find. And there was actually a lady there crocheting because earlier on you, you could have gone to the studio and participated in a, in a um, crochet workshop that they had. When there was still a lady there um, crocheting a mandala, there was yarn everywhere. And so it was pretty incredible. Now, the so, you know, the from the start of the project in 2015 to now, to the now finished basically project in the sense that the art show has been up and I'm not sure if it's going to travel. I think it is going to travel somewhere because Catherine is from San Francisco and she mentioned that, you know, they just couldn't find a space for it. It's just it was so expensive. And I told her that when I heard that there was going to be an art show, I thought, oh man, I would love to go, but I'm sure it's going to be in San Francisco and I don't know that I would make it up there. So for me to, to have found the show um, in Long Beach was just, it was pretty incredible. But I also, I wanted to share the, the book that she self-published for the project. It is an amazing book. It's called Mandalas for Marinka. And if you can see the cover on it, it has all these mandalas. And in the book, what you have is you have individual pictures of mandalas, close-ups of some mandalas, and then you have these really gorgeous collages that use um, the different mandalas that were sent in. So I'll show you, um, I'll show you a sample of what I mean. I have not read the whole book. I started reading it. And so, for example, you have these beautiful collages of the mandalas like that. You have close-ups of, of the stitches like that. Um, and, okay, this is one of my favorite ones. This is a collage made up of the different mandalas. And what's really wonderful is that I can spot my little mandala in this, these collages. And it doesn't appear just once because, you know, they're using the different color tones to make up the different collages. So if you see here... This is my mandala right there. And there's other pieces of it. There's other incarnations of it. But 
it's just incredible. If you submitted a mandala to this project, your mandala is in here. Oops. Your mandala is in this book. And also, there are quotes that are in the book that people submitted with their mandalas. Um, I don't know that she put every single quote that she received. I don't think she did, but she put enough of them here. And then the book um, is a wonderful resource because she gives you uh, resources on the meaning of a mandala. She gives you resources on suicide prevention and depression. She gives you even like li a list of movies, which I thought was really cool. She um, gives a list of all the people who have blogs who contributed and every single name of people who contributed to the project is in this book. So like I said, if you contributed to the Mandalas from Marinka project, you are part of this project, you are part of this book. And um, Catherine said, you know, that this was her baby, but that it was everyone's baby, really, because we all contributed to the project. And she wrote a dedication on in the book, and I'll read you what I loved about it. She says, you know, she wrote some stuff, and then she says, we are together so much more than the sum of our beautiful parts. And you really get the feeling of that. When we talk about, when I talk about crochet community and I talk about building community, there is no greater evidence that the crochet community is a giving, kind, and beautiful community than, than this. Um, a project to honor one of our own who contributed so much and who unfortunately, you know, um, suffered from depression. So it's a very, it, I'm, I'm emotional about it and I know a lot of you will be. And I do apologize if it triggers, if it triggers things in, some of you that maybe you were not ready for. I do apologize about that. And I don't know how to handle that. I don't know if I should, should have put something at the beginning of the episode, but I just, I wanted to share with you, um, something that was really beautiful that came out of so much sadness. And I, I did talk to Catherine and about, um, her contact with Marinka's family and she said that she has been in contact with a family member throughout the project, that she did receive communications from um, from Marinka's mom, from Wink. She, her nickname was Wink, which I think is a beautiful nickname. And so she, you know, she's, they're all aware that this project um, was happening and that this was happening. I will also... Um, tell you that she was working that wink was working on a book before she passed away that was not completed that was actually completed with a second author anita munt it's called crochet mandalas and i ordered this book long time ago i ordered it as soon as i knew that it was available and in it there's beautiful pictures of mandalas look at that isn't that beautiful and then what's really wonderful is that it also gives you different applications for it like for example there is um, a, a purse that you can make with the mandala and um, look at this I just I love this like a blanket so, oh, and then look at this one. That's pretty. A vest. So I, this is actually was her second book. She had written a book um, previous to this one that was called Boho Crochet 30 Hip and Happy Projects. So she had written that. And then um, if you check out her Ravelry page, Wink's Ravelry page, there are 54 patterns still available on 
that Ravelry page. Now, I think I think there's a couple that are only available um, if you buy the back issues of some magazines that she was featured on. So just be aware of that. But there are enough patterns that if you wanted to crochet a mandala, you totally could. And they're still free on her blog. And if you go to her blog, she has step-by-step -step tutorials of how to do them. So I would highly encourage you to check that out. She was also working on a blanket pattern for a cow that was going to be run by a Dutch yarn company. You guys know which yarn company I'm talking about. And what's funny is that I hear this name, this company's name pronounced so many different ways. And I thought, I'm just, I'm sure someone on YouTube has got to have a video on how to just, how to say this name. And I literally typed in how to pronounce X company. And you're not going to believe it, but it's Wink telling you how to pronounce the company name. Sorry, I just, I know that this recording is going to be a little emotional. So I put a link to the video where you can see her beautiful face and <laughs> her telling you how to pronounce Hepchis, which is the Dutch company. And she says, you know, if you're Dutch, you pronounce it this way. But for all other you, all other you, all you other guys who can't make this sound, um, you could totally pronounce it this way, and it's okay. And I think it's just wonderful. Um, the name of the of the cow is um, called Last Stance on the Beach. The pattern is still available on the Hepji's website, and I don't know if you can still get the yarn packs i couldn't figure that out but all the colors for all the different incarnations of the of the blanket are there so if you wanted i guess if you wanted to go and buy um the specific colors for each of the blankets um you could you could just i guess buy them individually there's three incarnations of the blanket and um you can you and you can check out um one is like dance in the rain and dance under the stars, something like that. But it's three different uh, versions of the blanket. So that cow design was finished by 12 of 12 bloggers slash designers that I'm sure were friends of Wink. Um, they came together and they finished off her blanket for her. And if you go to Wink's blog, which is a creative being, there the last post that's there is an article that was written about about Wink and about the blanket, translated to English, I believe, by her sister. And you'll see that thousands of people completed this blanket, and lots of lots and lots of participation and contributions um, to that cow, but. But yeah, it was completed by 12 bloggers, crocheters um, that were, I'm sure, I'm sure friends of Wink's. So, over a thousand mandalas were submitted to Catherine from 30 different countries by over 350 um, crocheters. That's quite the extensive um project to manage and like I said it, it was over a year and a half of her posting the mandalas and it's been two years in the making for the art show and the book so I would uh, highly encourage you to purchase the book you are basically supporting an independent publisher um, an artist and a fellow crocheter so let's see what else oh yes so Catherine has written three books well she's written a lot of there's a lot out there that she's written there's other books that she's written but um, the first book is called um, crochet saved my life which where she talks about her journey and dealing with depression how crochet really 
saved her life, basically. And in it are interviews by other people who are contributing and, and talking about that. Um, and that's actually how she met Wink, because she connected with Wink. And there's an interview there um, in the book about Wink's journey in depression and how crochet really has helped her. Um, so that's the first one. Then came the second book, Hook to Heal, which is another self-published book. It's this one right here. And this book is actually not a pattern book. So if you purchase this book, do not think that you're going to get a book that's filled with patterns. There's actually no pictures in this book. But I will read you, the subtitle is 100 Crochet Exercises for Health, Growth, Connection, Inspiration, and Honoring Your Inner Artist. So you don't have to be, you don't have to be a crocheter. Because I was sitting, I was actually sitting next to a painter at the show who was flipping through this book. And she told Catherine, you know, a lot of these exercises are applicable to other arts. And Catherine said, yes, I did. I mean, yes, it says hook to heal, but... She goes, my goal was that if you could pick up this book and, and do the exercises and you could have to be an artist of other sorts. You could be a painter, you could be a knitter, you could be a, a sewist. So they are, the book is broken down into different um, exercises, exercises that you can do. Um, and like I said, another incredible resource for you. I... Uh, I picked an extra copy of this book because I, I haven't read all of it. Like I said, I just went to the show on Saturday. But I would really like in the coming year to focus on this book and to um, go through it next year um, for my own inner growth. But I picked up an extra copy of Hook to Heal to give us a giveaway for this episode. And I will have a prompt in the Ravelry group like I usually do. And so I, um, and I also had her uh, put a dedication inside the book, which I thought was wonderful. So this book, this will be our, look at this, our giveaway, our giveaway for this episode. I really want to encourage you guys to check out Catherine's blog, check out what Crochet Saved My Life was about, check out Hook to Heal. And Mandalas from Marinka. There are three books that I think are a wonderful addition to our crochet library. All right. So, like I said, I have put extens. I have written probably the most extensive notes I have, or a, actually a blog post with the most extensive notes I've done for the blogcast. Um, so far and it has a lot of links and a lot of um, information on it and I would highly encourage you to check it out but moving on from that I also wanted to tell you that there are two other mandala books that I have in my crochet library and one of them is mandalas to crochet by Hafner Linson, and I'm sure you know. You guys know I've butchered this name. So this book I purchased um, because I love mandalas. And I saw it at Barnes & Noble. And I saw this mandala, which I fell in love with. It's the Granny Circle Mandala. I, I just, you know, I I'm, love... I love granny squares and I thought, wow, I just never, I never thought you could do crochet a mandala, but it has beautiful, beautiful mandalas. And let's see, there's one in here. Oh yeah, I love this one. I love the colors that she uses in her mandalas too. Very subtle, very pretty. It's, there's this one. And then... When I went to um, Sin City Knits on my last trip that I was there, I picked up another mandala book. This is published by the editors of Interweave Magazine, and it's called Modern Crochet Mandalas. 
50 mandalas in fresh modern colors and look at this look at this gorgeous mandala isn't that beautiful and then there is there are so many in here okay this is an interesting one a heart-shaped mandala and oh yeah this is a really pretty one too so this book um is awesome so in closing i just want to say a heartfelt thank you to Catherine of um mandalas for marinka for putting together an incredible project, an incredible experience. Um, thank you, thank you so much. Also, thank you to Thread Winners who helped bring the, the art exhibit down to Long Beach. Thank you to Grab Back Studios for providing the space. It all came together beautifully and I just wanna say thank you for that. Moving on to my next segment, which is going to be Yarnopolis. I um, have been crocheting like a mad woman. Don't know, you know, I, I get into these kicks where I find a pattern. I know a lot of people do not repeat patterns. So I'll do a pattern and then move on. But I find a pattern and I get sucked in when I really liked it. It happened to me with the blur which oh, I already have the yarn picked up for blur number three. And now it's happened with um, a pattern that I showed you guys last time. And I showed you the, the, the finished object, which was the Bob Wilson, the Bob Wilson 123 Cal Nick Poncho tutorial on YouTube. I, I made this first one, which I love. And then I decided I was going to, and make some more. So for this segment of Yarnopolis, I will be talking about uh, the yarn that I picked up to do two more of those. I, like I said, Michael's was having a two for one special and I picked up um, some Red Heart Super Saver yarn and some Patton's um, Classic Wool. But then I also made a little trip down to um, a yarn shop in Chula Vista called Borders Yarn at Borders and Leather in Chula Vista is the name of the yarn store. And I love that yarn shop. It is such a great crochet yarn shop. Usually when you go to yarn shops, you guys know it's like 99% knitting and uh, oh, here's some dusty old crochet scarf that, you know, somebody crocheted and we're putting up there just to... Just to put it up at this yarn shop they have a ton of crochet samples a ton knitting and crochet is definitely living in a happy harmony at this shop so i picked up this malabrigo malabrigo aniversario which to be honest with you i think i already have a skein of because i tend to be attracted to the same kind of colors but look at this color well not color i mean look at these colors in this yarn like i said it's the that's the tag i just love the variation that the how deep these colors are here so i picked this up i think i have another one in my stash i'll talk about my stash in a little bit too because there's a situation that's happened. So I picked that up and then I picked up the rest of my yarn, my Novato, to finish my um, my skull jumper. So this should finish it up. And then I also picked up this pretty color too. Mm, that's gross. Okay, I picked up this color. Because I have an... Um, have another project in mind I think I did show it to you guys last time it was a it was a crochet top which I realized I was not going to have enough of this color yarn so I picked that up so that's basically uh, my acquisitions for yarn then I picked up 
this little doohickey right here, which keeps getting caught on my on my bracelet. It is a super strong magnet. It's in the shape of a little sheep. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can get it close to you right there. See the little sheep? There you go. Okay. So, I don't know about you guys, but every time I'm weaving in ends, I lose all my needles. So, I saw this little needle minder. Check this out. You hear? This, it's a super strong, really, really strong magnet. So now, when I'm weaving in my ends, I'm not putting, you know, my little needles all over the place. I'm just putting them there, which I think is genius. But the funny part is that this bracelet I'm wearing has a magnet, it's got metal in it. So every time I'm anywhere in this vicinity, it just goes straight to the, to the little sheep right there. So I picked that up, but that's basically all the acquisitions that I have to show you guys. So moving on to finished objects, as you see, I, this is the one I showed last time. Then I was very anxious to use some of my hand dyed yarn that I showed you in the previous episode. So I decided I was going to do a poncho, same pattern, same pattern uh, that I showed you, showed you, and just, I only had one ball of the hand dyed, so I paired it up with the natural yarn, which is the same one that I hand dyed, um, and made this one, which I have been wearing almost every single night since I made it. I love it. I love it. It is by far my most favorite thing I have made in the last month. <laughs> um, just because the weather is just turning colder at night. And, you know, if I put a shawl, I have to figure out how to keep it on me. And then I don't want to really put a sweater on. Just so this is perfect. I have made some adjustments to the pattern because if you look at the pattern the pattern is a little bit um the cow part is a little bit wider and it has this little um like crocheted chain that you can use to to tighten it up which i have done exactly that on that one but i just wanted something snug i like having like my neck warm and i I went ahead and I just made the cowl part a little bit snugger. So it just kind of stays up there. I don't have the string to hold it together. I did, on this particular one, I did three increases. So three rows where I increased. And then I did not front or back post crochet. I just put a very simple single crochet around. That's all I did. So this is, and you've seen pictures of it, and I made it longer as well. I wanted it to be longer. So when I went to the movies the other night and I took this, I was snuggle, snuggling nice and warm under my poncho, so I love it. Then I thought I would make one as a gift for one of my aunts, who I usually crochet for. And I did this one. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit shorter, and I'm, I was playing around with the, the, the neck part. So you'll see that this one's a little bit wider, because I don't know that she likes things really close to her neck, so this kind of rolls down. And I've put a picture on Instagram, and I will include it on here so that you can see how the three different um, ponchos look. But this one only has two increases here and I will tell you one thing that I'm working on and that is I don't like which you can't see it on that one the one that I just showed you I don't like to see where the join is right here see that you can clearly see the chain three and then the join so 
that's been something that I've been playing around with, trying to figure out how I can do it without having that join. So I put, I put this little marker here. This is one of the stitch markers that Hannah sent to me because I think it's okay. I can get away with it or you can get away with it if you wear, wear it with a join on the side because if you wear it on the back, you can see it. So you can see the join on the back, but if it's on the side, it's not as noticeable. So I'm going to um, be giving this as a gift. This was done with patents, but it wasn't done. This is patents classic wool merino, and this is patents classic wool. And it does feel a little bit different than that one, but it's just as nice. I mean, I, I can't complain about it. But I also thought, you know, some people don't like the wool. The original, the original poncho is done in um, Red Heart Super Saver. And that's one of the reasons that I picked up some Super Saver. Let me show you the label. So this is not Super Saver. This is pertaining to the merino. So this is the Patton's Merino. You can see it's Patton's Classic Wool Merino. And then this is Patton's Classic Wool. And like I said, it does feel different. And um, I mean, I like them both. They're, all, they're both good. But the original pattern is done with Super Saver. So I thought, you know what? Let me pick up some Super Saver. Let me do it with it to see how it works up. And this is one that you have not seen on Instagram but I made this one. Again, with the color blocking, I'm really enjoying um, the color blocking. Oh, it's stuck again. With the three different colors. Again, with the, the little bit thicker cowl part, I mean, the little bit narrower cowl part because I like this. I like the way it looks. And... I love the color blocking, but again, I will tell you this. I started with the usual chain three, and then you can see the join right there. But right here, and I put a marker there so that you can see it. I did something a little bit different. I actually, what I did is a standing double crochet to start the round. Now you may have heard Faye from the Crochet Circle podcast talk about this previous episodes before and I will put a link to the video on how to do this because Moogly blog has um, a great tutorial for that so I'm gonna have to take this little sheep off so then now if you do the standing double crochet it's not as noticeable it really isn't Can you see the difference between here and then the rest? So that's, those are my three finished objects and I've decided everyone's getting a poncho this Christmas. Like my mom's getting one. I've already got two here that I know who I'm going to gift to. And I um, have picked up, I've picked up the yarn from my next poncho, which is the one from the yarn shop that I visited. This is going to only have two different colors. It's not going to have the three the color block the three color blocks but it's this really beautiful peachy color this is Barocco vintage and this dark gray one so I'll be doing a poncho in these two colors it's really pretty then I have also another poncho that I want to do with the other red heart super saver that I got which will be a three a three color block and I'll show you what that combo is 
if you would like, it's going to be these three colors. Um, if you'd like to know the name of the colors that I'm using, I'm putting those uh, in the show notes. So that is my three finished crochet projects. But I also went ahead and, like I was saying, I took a little break from crocheting because um, I really overdid it. I did do um, some sewing because I wanted to rest my hands from all that hooking. So loving the sewing, you guys. I'm so, like, I'm just, where was sewing all my life? I know some people don't like it, but I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I just, I, maybe because I love the fabric and I love picking out fabric. And I've just been seeing all this incredible fabric at Joann's and different places. So I mentioned last week that I was, I'm, sort of wanting to develop a different size bag than what I see out there because, you know, especially when you have these kind of um, skeins of yarn, they're not going to fit in the little project bags. So I went ahead and I made this. And these are little yarn balls. And in this bag, you can fit comfortably two... You could actually probably squeeze three in here, but you can fit two balls of your super saver. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I made this bag and I made, woo, I made this bag with the little candy canes. So I put a couple little details on it and honest, I'll be honest with you, I put, put this because it reminded me of a snowflake but also to hide some imperfections back here with the with the ribbon and the same thing here I thought that was really cute and I lined it in red oh you'll see my horrible stitching but here's I lined it in red but it's it's super cute I really like and like I said and this size is great I think this is a great mid size for me I, it's they're not squared off. I could square them off, but really I don't mind that they're not squared off because a lot of times I just either throw them in my bag or they're just sitting next to me on the couch. So I don't need it to be standing up. So I made those two and I made a third one that is heading to its new home. So I, as a gift, so I made three bags and I crocheted three ponchos since our last episode. That's pretty um, good, right? See. Now let's talk about the works in progress. So I have the skull jumper is a work in progress. That's an old one, but I have a new work in progress, which is my spun gold shawl by Kat Golden. What I like about it, it's a one skein project and I'm using my sock blank from Goosey Fibers that was called A to, A to Texas. And here it is. I, I mean, I have the minimalist of starts. I mean, it's just a, really, I just started the project and then I got hung up on the ponchos and that was it. So this is all I have. These are quintuple, quintuple trebles, I believe they're called, or quintuple double crochets. So much fun to do. Like, I love doing these. Um, and it's being held together by my little stitch marker, which is a llama corn. A llama corn. That is just genius. So the maker of the Llama Corn Stitch Markers is a very talented yarn dyer um, who is Julia Wardell of Pandia's Jewels. And when I ordered my Llama Corn um, Stitch Markers, it came with this mini skein of yarn, this super cute little pin, and then here's her card. I love it. 
this is called Obscure, and it's a uh, in her 75, 25, um, 75% merino, 25% nylon soft yarn. So isn't that pretty? Or not? Is that focusing or not? I don't know. I can't tell. But here is the name of the of the color. And so I bought some llama corns, and, I, and I've gifted some llama corns to people, and they love them. And I just think that they're so cute. Who wouldn't want a llama corn, right? So that is my other work in progress. I, oh, and I guess I didn't show the sock length. This is the sock length that I'm working from. And I'll tell you this. It's a little tricky to work from the sock length at the beginning, because to get this started was a little tricky and actually because I've never used a sock blank I started from the wrong end and I kept thinking what what am I doing wrong what is going on so I have a little bit of this going on here but once I got and I so I cut I had to cut and reattach the yarn um, so I could keep going and but once you get it on the right side it just unravels very easily and now that I'm here I, it's okay to it's okay to crochet with I don't have a problem with it but it is a little tricky to start it off I'll tell you that because of how crinky all the all the crinks in the yarn so because of that it can be a little tricky but it's okay we're good we're good um I can't wait to finish it I love that it's a one skein project I need more of those in my life and I believe I believe that um Faye from the crochet circle podcast and um, Charlie from Love Charlie are doing a one skein project cow. So check out the Crochet Circle podcast, a Ravelry group, because I think they're um, doing something with that. And so I definitely will enter this in that. So that is my work in progress. Now, moving on to pattern palooza i am so loving my pattern palooza segment because i love looking at patterns and for this episode of pattern palooza i have a special one for you because our own super talented quaylen stark has a new pattern that he's designed that's out and it is a free pattern it is called the Melchior Scarf. I hope I said that right. Quaylen, if I didn't, I do apologize. It is another gorgeous cabled scarf. Look at that. It's long. I love how long it is. And it's called the Melchior Scarf. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And he did a YouTube tutorial. So there is a tutorial that goes with this pattern to help us figure out how to do the cabling on it. So I, I love it. I love that he is out there putting his designs out there. And I, you know, I'll tell you this. I love his aesthetic and I love that his podcast, his Instagram, there's an, there's an art, uh, a performance art aspect to it. I really like that. I enjoy that. So check out his pattern. Give it some love. And um, I will be crocheting this. I already have the yarn for it. It's in stash. So I will be crocheting the Melchior scarf. Next, because I'm on this poncho kick, who would have ever, are you, you know what? I just, I never would have thought that I was going to get on a poncho kick. Never in a million years. But now I want everybody on a poncho. I told my daughter, you're getting a poncho. And I told my husband, would you wear a poncho? He's not going to wear it, so I will not be making him a poncho. But I am in such, I am in such a huge poncho making mode that I want to cover the world in ponchos. But check this one out. This is a free pattern from Red Heart. I think it's so pretty. It has color work on it, which I've never done. And it's called the Canyon Ridge, Canyon Ridge Fringe Poncho. It is a free pattern. Then I found a paid pattern by Noro. 
call the rhombus poncho, which I really, really like. Look at that. Maybe from here. And it's just such a simple construction, you know. I When you look at the schematics of it, it's a very simple construction. I think it could be done fairly quickly. But the stitch is different. Like right now, I've just been doing double crochet, double crochet, which I love. Hi guys, um, sorry about the disjointed video here, but I was editing the blog cast and I realized that I deleted a segment that would have completed Pattern of Palooza, so I didn't want you guys to miss out and I am inserting that here with this video. As you can see, I've had a little bit of a change in um, what I'm wearing in my hair and now you see me with my glasses on, but I really just wanted to... Uh, continue on and finish off pattern palooza as well as um there was something else that i wanted to talk to you about so i do apologize for how disjointed this video is going to look but i really didn't want you to miss out so i talked about the noro poncho that was the last thing that you saw which is this one right here and then i was going to i filmed it but i guess i delete i don't know how i deleted it but I have some of Winx patterns that I wanted to share with you. And the first one of those patterns is the pattern for the 12 round mandala. This is the mandala that I enjoy making. And so this is on Ravelry. Um, like I said, this is her 12, her standard 12 round mandala. There's also another popular mandala that she designed, which is a spokes mandala. And it's um, uh, Spoke Mandala. It's right here. It's a very nice pattern that uses different colors. And she also had a pattern for some wrist warmers that I, I really, really liked, which is this one right here. So these look like a really quick make, and so I thought... I would make myself some for um, for the mornings because the mornings is when I usually, you know, my hands are a little bit more stiff because of the it, when it gets cold. So I'm going to try and make a, a pair of those. And then there was one that I thought was really appropriate for the season, which is these little crochet Christmas lights. And what's really nice about this pattern is that there is a tutorial and like I said, this all of these patterns are linked in the notes below. Um, they're linked there. As you know, I like to provide you guys with all the links for the patterns. So all of those patterns are there in, in the show notes. The other thing that I deleted, which I was really excited to um, talk to you guys about, is that I was in contact with Lisa Woodruff, who is... Um, she runs a mini, um, swapless swap and, uh, she did it for the grocery girls and she started her own podcast recently called Scrappy Happy Life. Um, check it out. She's really sweet. She crochets and knits, but mainly she does this, um, these mini swaps where she contacts different indie dyers and then she makes up these minis and then you pay her the money and then she sends you uh, the minis and so for the crochet luna broadcast I knew that the end of the year she was completely swamped um, with advent calendars and other mini swaps so I wasn't really expecting to get in on the mini skein action this year but I've set one up for the crochet luna broadcast um, that will ship by February 15th so the way it works is that she has put a post in the crochet Luna Ravelry group you can find it there for the mini swap the swap plus swap and um, you you pay her the money and then you will get your mini skeins then um, the way it works is she's using um, an indie dyer from Pennsylvania whose Etsy shop name is 
What the Flock Hand Dyed, which I think is brilliant. I love the name. And his, his style of dyeing is really super bright colors. So if you are not into super bright colors, this is probably not going to be the swap for you. I think they're fabulous. Um, there is a colorway called When Unicorns Fist Fight. Just the name itself I thought was brilliant. So that is going to be the yarn dye that she's going to use for the Crochet Luna uh, mini skein swap. Let's swap. You um, have till January 15th to send her the money for the swap. And then the minis will ship on February 15th. So the the cost for U.S. residents is $30. For Canadian residents is $35. And $40 for everybody else worldwide basically and you will get um, 10 different colored skeins that are 40 yards each so you get a total of 400 yards in the swap um, so I wanted to make sure that I let you know about the swap um, it's already there in the Ravelry uh, group so you can check it out um, I will be purchasing one spot that I will be doing a giveaway for um, closer to the date when she's going to ship I will um, maybe it'll be our, our Valentine's Day swap. I don't know, but um, I will be purchasing, like I said, a swap for the broadcast to give away. So now you'll see me. Um, I will edit back into the rest of the video. And thank you so much for watching. And um, like I said, I apologize that it's going to look disjointed, but I didn't want you to miss out on the rest of the patterns that I have chosen. And also this um, mini swap that we're going to be a part of. So thank you so much. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about is something, an idea that's been floating in my mind. And actually it came together after, um, I think two episodes ago it was, that I showed you guys I showed you guys this bag and when I was talking about this bag I kept calling it my Christmas witch bag like, I don't even know I say things when I'm recording these videos and then I go back and edit and I think where the hell did that come from because I have no idea that my brain had put those words in my mouth so I called this my Christmas witch bag and you guys got a kick out of that so then I thought, well, why not? Why not do a Christmas witch um, something or other? And I thought, Christmas card. I don't know about you guys or where you're at, but what I've noticed is that every year I get less and less Christmas cards sent to me. Um, actually, I think I got like three last year, which is pretty pathetic. And I think one of them was from my insurance agent. So... I thought, why don't I put on the on the broadcast uh, a call out for a Christmas card swap? Since you know it shouldn't cost a lot of money, um, and I'm actually going to do a um, a postcard, so it won't be a full on card. It's just going to be a postcard because I believe I think the shipping, the mailing might be a little bit less expensive as well. I don't know. I'll have to look into it. But anyway, I designed a. Christmas card and it is inspired by this little faux pas of mine and I it's definitely inside joke because if you don't know about the Crochet Luna broadcast or the episode where I completely screwed up and call these Christmas witches and you're gonna get you're gonna see this Christmas card and go oh, what the heck but anyway I have de developed some original art that is going to get printed on a card and I will send that out to anybody who wants to swap Christmas cards with me. Um, I put my email address, send me an email with your address and I'll know that, that you want to participate and I will send you a Crochet Luna holiday card and hopefully you will send me one back and then I can have a wall of Christmas, beautiful Christmas cards to look at this holiday season. So, um, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm a horrible business person. I guess I should be plugging my little pen. I want to thank everyone who has bought 
a crochet sisters pin um they it's just been so so wonderful um that you guys liked it and that you you receive it and you send me all these wonderful messages about it so thank you so much about that so you can find me on instagram uh facebook and my blog and on ravelry as crochet luna uh, feel free to leave me a comment send me a mail email and however way you want to contact me go ahead and do so um thank you for tuning in have a very happy thanksgiving um and i will see you next time but before i go i did usually i do um I usually read you a, you know, I'll give you your quote from the jar of joy that I got here. I usually pull out a little quote and I read it to you. Today, I would like to read a quote that um, comes straight from the book, Mondalish from Marinka. And it's actually a quote that is straight from Wink and is, on the, is in the book. And Wink told Catherine the following. I can't imagine myself not being creative. It's just who I am. I crochet and craft and be creative to keep my sanity. I would lose my mind if I couldn't create anything. I want to inspire those around me and I can do that with crochet. This is a quote from July 21st, 2014. So Spread the crochet love, crochet on, be kind to yourself, enjoy your family, and I will see you next time. Bye.